Fleck, the Appaloosa who had no spots. Fleck was a yearling Appaloosa colt. Appaloosas are special horses with spots. Fleck had no spots. He knew this because he looked. A fly was worrying him and buzzing around his head and landing on his back. The fly was out of range of Fleck's swishing tail, so he turned his head and tried to shoo the fly away with his teeth. When he turned his head, Fleck noticed he had no spots. No spots? I'm an Appaloosa with no spots, Fleck thought. He gambled over to his mamma, Miss Dotty, a golden Appaloosa with white spots, and asked, Mamma, why don't I have any spots? Oh, you are very young, Fleck, just a colt. Your spots will come at just the right time. Don't worry. Fleck didn't like this answer because he didn't like to wait. Who does? And so he trotted across the paddock to talk to his father, Mr. Pepper, a beautiful black and white leopard Appaloosa. Papa, Fleck began, Papa, Mama has spots, and you have spots, but I don't have spots. Where are my spots? When will they come? Hmm. You are very young, Fleck, just a colt. Your spots will come in time. Don't fret yourself about it. Is fretting like worrying, Papa? Yes, exactly like it. Why? Because that's what Mama said. She is very wise, said his father. Fleck thought so, too, but still he worried about his spots. In the pasture next to Fleck there were two pot-bellied pigs, Abraham and Sarah. They had spots. In the pasture on the other side of Fleck's family was a pasture with a longhorn steer in it. His name was Brisket. He was from Texas. He had spots. And horns. Very long horns. Walking around outside the pasture anywhere they pleased and eating anything they pleased were goats. Pygmy goats. They had spots. As Fleck looked around, he saw the sheep resting under the trees dappled with shade. Even they looked like they had spots. Wait, four of them did have spots. The Jacob sheep had spots. And horns. Four horns. What's up with that? thought Fleck. Whiskers the cat had spots. Amos the blue tick hound had spots. The cows had spots. The sun had spots. Even some children had spots. But he heard that they had mumps or measles or something spotty that would heal. Everyone had spots. Everyone but him. Fleck was an Appaloosa who had no spots. He worried. He went back to his mamma, Miss Dotty. Mamma, the pigs have spots, the goats have spots, the longhorn has spots, the dog has spots, the cat has spots. Some of the chickens have tiny spots. Even the sheep look like they have spots, and some do have spots. Where are my spots? You will grow into your spots, Fleck. You will just have to wait. Please, believe me, your spots will come. Right now, your colt is golden, just like mine. Your spots are hiding. They are there. You just can't see them. Please be patient, little one. Your spots will show up at just the right time. Fleck's best friend in all the world was Dominic. Dominic was a miniature donkey. He was small, but his heart was big. Dominic lived in the paddock with Fleck and his family most of the time, but sometimes he wandered the ranch just to make sure everything was all right. Dominic, Fleck said, I don't have any spots, said Dominic. I don't have any spots either. Yes, but you're not supposed to have spots. I am, and besides, you have a beautiful collar of light gray around your neck that looks so nice. I just have hide, short-haired golden hide, and no spots. Well, hmm, let me think about that, said Dominic, and he closed his eyes and flicked his ears. Fleck thought he was sleeping, but he might have been thinking. Dominic did a lot of thinking with his eyes closed. Fleck tiptoed quietly away and began to graze on the grass in the pasture near Abraham and Sarah, the pot-bellied pigs. Abraham was snuffling at the ground looking for leftover food, and Sarah was asleep in the mud near their shelter. Fleck could see Abraham's spots through the mud on his back. Abraham, where did you get your spots? 
Well, I was, I was born with spots. And Sarah? Where did she get her spots? asked Fleck. <clears throat> she was born with spots, too. Pigs who have spots, and only the best pigs have spots, are born with spots. You don't, you don't have spots? said Abraham. I, I have spots. They just don't show right now, whinnied Fleck. Mama says my spots will come, but I can't wait. I want spots now. Hmm. <clears throat> I, I think I can help you with that. Come over by the fence, grunted Abraham. Flecked walked over by the fence that separated the two paddocks and stood very still. Finally, he was going to get some spots. Abraham waddled back a few yards from the wallow where Sarah was settled in the mud, and with a fast as run as potbelly Biggs can run, Abraham started for the mud hole. When he got to the edge, he launched himself out over the mud and came down with a resounding splat. Mud splashed all over Fleck. It was on his nose. It was in his ears. It was on his legs. It was on his back. Spots! He had spots. <clears throat> Turn around. We'll do the other side, Abraham winked. Fleck gladly turned around. Abraham took another run and another jump and another splat, and now Fleck had spots on both sides. Muddy spots, smelly spots, dripping spots, but spots all the same. I have spots. Thank you, Abraham. Abraham just grunted contentedly. He had landed in the mud next to Sarah, and thought this was as good a place to take a nap after all that exercise, and he fell fast asleep. Fleck was so proud of his new spots, he went to show his mamma Miss Dotty. Mamma, my spots have come in. Fleck, what have you done? Those are not spots. That's mud. Phew! And it smells. How will we get you clean again? Miss Emily, the rancher's daughter, saw Fleck with the mud on his back and thought she would clean him up. She went into the paddock. She attached a lead to his halter and gently led him to the big barn. It was dark and cool in the barn. The barn swallows flew in and out. The barn cats, with their spots, stalked about in their stealthy glide hunting for mice. Fleck saw them and thought, Oh, even the barn cats have spots. That is not fair. Miss Emily tied Fleck to a ring on the wall, went into the tack room, and came out with a brush. She began to brush Fleck down with the brush, starting with his neck, and slowly going down his shoulders to his legs, along his back and belly, toward his tail. As she brushed, she talked to Fleck. She told him what a good colt he was, how handsome he was, and how golden his coat was, and how grand he would be when his spots came in. Fleck was fine until she mentioned spots. He had been lulled asleep by the brush and the gentle words until he heard spots. What did she know about spots? Would she tell him? Was she brushing away his spots? What if she brushed his real spots away? What if she brushed his spots away and they were falling on the barn floor with the mud and the dust? Maybe he would never have spots now. With that, he began to buck and pull away from the rope. The harder he pulled, the tighter the halter got, and the more flecked panic. All his spots would be gone. Miss Emily kept talking to him and calming him down. She continued to brush him until he, he gave up. He hung his head down, and if horses could cry, he would have cried. Miss Emily had brushed all his spots away, and he would never have spots now. When she finished, she led Fleck back to the paddock. Oh, Fleck, his mother said, you look so nice with your beautiful golden colt. But Fleck was very sad. He was an Appaloosa who had no spots. Fleck went off into the corner of the paddock he shared with his parents and Dominic. He just wanted to be alone. There was a big tree for shade in the next paddock, and Brisket the Longhorn was standing chewing his cud and looking majestic with his long horns and his spots. Brisket had spots. Brisket, how long have you had your spots? Brisket chewed his cud a bit before speaking, because his mamma had taught him it is never polite to speak with your mouth full. When he had swallowed and run his tongue around in his mouth to make sure it was empty, he replied, 
I was born with spots. My spots were there right when they are now, when I was born. See that one spot? It sort of looks like Texas if you squint, turn your head sideways a bit, and imagine what Texas would look like if it were sliding off the earth. Yep, just like Texas. But your spots, you were born with spots, Fleck asked again. Yep, Brisket said, and began to look for more grass to eat. I, I'm supposed to have spots, too, but I, I don't. I'm an Appaloosa who has no spots. Brisket pondered on this for a while. Longhorns are very good at pondering, especially when they chew their cud. I think I can help you with that. Does it matter what color your spots are? Brisket asked. Not to me. I just want some spots, said Fleck. Well, then, mosey on over to the paint barn with me, and I can help you out, said Brisket. Is that the barn where the paint horses are kept? Because we don't have one of those, said Fleck. No, little one. That's the barn where the paint buckets are kept. Meet me there. Brisket began to slowly wander in the direction of the paint barn. Fleck was so excited. He pranced a bit and jumped a bit and danced a bit all the way over to the paint barn. He went inside with Brisket. The whole place was filled with paint. Big buckets of paint, small buckets of paint, red paint, blue paint, black paint, white paint, orange paint, yellow paint, purple paint, brown paint, pink paint, paint, paint! Paint from floor to ceiling, all spattered with spots and runs and drips. Even the paint has spots, Fleck thought. Now stand right there, little one, said Brisket. Fleck moved to the left side of the paint barn, where the cans were stacked the highest and stood very still. Then Brisket leaned his great head with his great horns to the left and snapped it back to the right. The tip of his horn pierced a bucket of red barn paint, and it began to shoot out. Now jog around a little bit, little one, said Brisket, and Fleck danced around. All right, that will do you, said Brisket. When Fleck looked back, he could see red spots all over him. Big spots, small spots, lots of spots, all in barn red. He was so happy. He trotted out of the barn and went to find his mamma in the paddock. Mamma, I have spots. Oh, Fleck, she gasped. Oh, Fleck, that's paint, and it will take forever to wear off. What were you thinking? It will cover your beautiful spots when they come in. You get down right now and roll around on your back and try to get the paint off before it dries. Fleck was a bit hurt and very surprised. He thought the red spots looked rather nice. But he did love a good roll, and so he knelt down, turned on his back, and began to roll around. It felt very good. But he was worried that the spots would wear off. First his mud spots were brushed off, now his paint spots would be rubbed off, and probably take whatever spots the brushing hadn't gotten rid of. And sure enough, the paint spots were gone. He was still the Appaloosa, who had no spots. Now Fleck was very sad. He had no spots. He went over to the paddock corner by himself and felt very sorry for himself. He didn't want to wait for his spots. He wanted them now. While he was there in the corner, Whiskers the cat, the cat with spots, came by. Meow, what's wrong with you, Fleck? Now, Whiskers didn't really care about Fleck. In fact, he didn't care about anything but himself, but he tried to make others think he cared by asking about them so that he could then talk about himself, because that's what cats do. I don't have any spots. I've tried to have spots. I think about having spots all the time. Everyone else has spots. Even you have spots, Whiskers. But I am the Appaloosa who has no spots. Meow, is that all? I can help you with that, purred Whiskers. You can? You would help me? asked Fleck. He was a bit wary because Whiskers had never offered to help him before. But Fleck was desperate. I can help your spots appear. Be still now. And Whiskers leapt up on Fleck's back. That felt funny. It tickled a bit. And Fleck shivered his skin a bit. 
You have to be very still now, yelled Whiskers. With that, he began to knead Fleck's back with his paws. Ouch, that hurts, whinnied Fleck. And he began to stamp around. Oh, spots hurt coming in. Didn't anyone tell you that, asked Whiskers. I thought everyone knew that. Fleck didn't want to sound ignorant, and so he just didn't say anything. Fleck stood there while Whiskers kept kneading his back, and Fleck just took it. What's happening? Oh, I'm just getting your back ready for spots. Now spots take a little time to come to the surface, as it were, and they have to percolate a bit, too. To help them, I'm going to stay right here on top of them to make sure everything is fine. You must be very still while the warm sun cooks your spots. With that, Whiskers kneaded Flex back a couple more times, and then curled up and took a nap. Fleck was afraid to move. How long did Spots take to cook? How long did he have to stay still? What would happen if he moved? What would happen if he had an itch? And so Fleck stood very still. After a while, Dominic wandered over to talk to Fleck. Fleck? Why are you standing there with whiskers sleeping on your back? Fleck spoke out of the side of his mouth, barely moving his lips. He's helping me cook my spots. He's keeping my back warm so my spots will come in. He looks like he's sleeping to me, said Dominic, who did not trust Whiskers. Well, you look like you're sleeping to me sometimes, too, when you tell me you're thinking, said Fleck, still talking quietly out of the side of his mouth. Whiskers, you wake up, you scheming cat, brayed Dominic cooking spots indeed you just want another soft place in the sun to sleep off you go you conniving cat and with that dominic stood up on his hind hoofs and pushed whiskers off fleck's back with his nose whiskers hit the ground with a thud but on his feet as cats do he waved his tail back and forth a few times and laughed a meow and raced off under the fence fleck's back still hurt where whiskers had got him with his claws he hung his head so "'I still don't have any spots?' asked Fleck. "'Nope. No spots. "'But you do have some roughed-up places where that selfish cat clawed you. "'I think—' "'But then Dominic's eyes were closed, and he fell asleep again. "'But Fleck thought he had announced what he was thinking. "'So he left Dominic alone to think, and he wandered off through the paddock gate.' Amos, the blue tick hound, was coming down the ranch road with his nose in the air and his body moving sort of sideways. He wasn't snooty or stuck up. He was just sniffing the air and finding out what was going on around the ranch with his nose. Howdy, Amos. What's going on? Amos stood there just a moment with his nose in the air and said, Well, there's a woodchuck in the north pasture making a hole. I'll have to go over later and run him out. Don't want anybody to break their fetlock in a woodchuck hole. He sniffed again. And Cook's got chicken going on the oven for dinner. Another sniff. And fresh biscuits. Amos turned his head and sniffed in the other direction. Rancher Matt just found the skunk's new den, and he's not happy about it. I don't think Rancher Matt is either. Best stay up wind to him for a while. Knew he was headed that way. That's why I didn't follow him. That's all I got for now. What's going on with you, Fleck? Amos, I don't have any spots. Okay. That it? asked Amos. Amos, I'm an Appaloosa, and I don't have any spots. Well, I'm a blue tick hound, but I'm not blue. That'd bother me. What does your mamma say? continued Amos. She says my spots will come if I just wait, answered Fleck. Sounds like good advice to me. Hope I don't turn blue, though. I got a collar for ticks. Kind of like the way I am. You should, too. Like the way you are, I mean. Fleck closed his eyes. "'What are you doing?' asked Amos. "'I'm thinking about what you said.' "'Oh, I thought you were sleeping,' said Amos. "'Well, this is what Dominic does when he's thinking,' replied Fleck. "'Fleck, Dominic is sleeping,' Amos told him. "'Are you sure?' "'Yep, but if that works for you, go with it,' said Amos. "'I've got smells to smell.' And Amos went off on his sideways walking, nose in the air, sniffing away. Fleck opened his eyes. 
but he continued to think about what Amos had said. Maybe he should be just satisfied with waiting. But Fleck didn't like to wait. He was walking as he thought these thoughts and came to the pygmy goat herd. They had spots. Now, I'm certain there are sweet pygmy goats, and I'm sure there are nice pygmy goats. I'm certain there are well-behaved pygmy goats. But not on this ranch. No, these pygmy goats were not any of those things. They were more of a band of unruly children who never behaved and were never quiet. And they had spots. Here Fleck was trying to be good and well-behaved, and he had no spots, and there were these raucous pygmy goats with spots. That was not fair. Nuby, the leader of the pygmy gang, and possessor of black coat with white spots, called to Fleck across the paddock. What's up, buttercup? No one likes to be called Buttercup in that mocking, sarcastic way, not even Buttercups, and so Fleck immediately took offense. "'What are you asking?' "'I mean, what's a-going, Mr. Bowen? What you thinking, Mr. Blinken? What a snoozer, Mr. Loser?' And with all this, all the other pygmy goats began to spring about, calling out and shouting, "'Mr. Blinken, Mr. Loser, Mr. Snoozer, what's up, Buttercup?' All this made Fleck very frustrated and sad and angry all at once. He neighed as loudly as he could. I don't have any spots. And all the pygmy goats began to laugh in that loud, unruly way that they did everything else. Then Newby said, Spots, dots, blots, clots, lots. And the other pygmy goats began to chant that. Spots, dots, blots, clots, lots. Over and over and over. All this time the pygmy goats were herding Fleck toward the berry patch. He had no idea where he was, but by now he was frightened and a bit angry. When the pygmy goats got him to the berry patch, they began to trample through the blueberries, the blackberries, the strawberries, and tap their hooves all over Fleck, who couldn't move. Spots, dots, clots, blots! They shouted over and over each time they tapped him with their hooves and left a mark on him until poor Fleck was covered in sticky sweet spots from the ruined berries. He was standing there, shaking all over and afraid, when Dominic raced up and began his own bit of tapping on the pygmy goats. He kicked them with his hooves, he butted them with his head, he snapped at them with his teeth, and drove them all away. He nudged Fleck, who was by now very humiliated at what was happening, down toward the pond, and he eased Fleck into the water to wash away all the spots put on him by the pygmy goats. He didn't even mind that the spots were gone, and that he was left without any spots. He was just glad it was over, and that Dominic, his friend, had rescued him. "'Thank you, Dominic,' said Fleck, when they had reached the paddock that they shared, and they both fell fast asleep. But Dominic might have been thinking. The next morning Fleck still didn't have any spots, but he remembered who did, the Jacob sheep. They had spots and horns, four horns, so they were not like any other sheep on the ranch. Jacob's sheep were very special. Fleck had some breakfast at the hay ring, and a good roll in the sand, and refreshed and ready to go, he set out to see the Jacob's sheep. They were in a special paddock away from the other sheep. Isaac was their leader. He was quite formal, and even a bit stuffy, but very wise. He was also a good defender of the farm, like Dominic, but with his four horns he looked much more ferocious than Dominic. "'Please, sir, may I ask you a question?' asked Fleck. Mm, "'That is one question. Would you like to ask another one?' Isaac replied. The other Jacob sheep, the ewes and the lambs, tried not to bah a laugh at Fleck. They had heard Isaac say this before to young animals. "'Yes, please.' "'Continue,' said Isaac. "'Please, sir, I've noticed that you and your family have spots. "'I am an Appaloosa, and I'm supposed to have spots, but I don't. "'You are young, and your spots have not had time to come in, Fleck. "'They will appear in time,' responded Isaac. "'Yes, but I, I want them now.' "'Please, sir, how did you get your spots?' asked Fleck. "'Well, we are born with them,' said Isaac. But how we came to have spots is an old, old story from long ago and far away. Once there was a man named Jacob who wanted to get married. He also wanted to own lots of sheep and goats and cattle. 
and he made a deal with a man whose daughter he wanted to marry to let him, Jacob, have all the sheep and goats and cattle born with spots. So Jacob put up some spotted and striped sticks where the sheep, goats, and cattle gathered, and spotted sheep, goats, and cattle started being born, and so we are called Jacob's sheep for Jacob. Would that work for me? I doubt it. But as I understand it, if you just wait, your spots will come, answered Isaac. That's what my mamma says, Miss Dotty, said Fleck. She is very wise, said Isaac. That's what my papa, Mr. Pepper, says, said Fleck. He is very wise, too. And that's what my friend Dominic and Amos say, too, answered Fleck. They are very wise, also. Perhaps, in light of all this wisdom, you should just wait for your spots to come in, pronounced Isaac. And the Jacob ewes and lambs nodded in agreement. But I don't want to wait, said Fleck. I think you'll have to. And that was that. Fleck was just going to have to wait to see if his spots would come in, even though he didn't like to wait. Who does? The days passed, and every day Fleck would check his back to see if his spots had come in, and they hadn't. Some days he would forget to check. Then he would check twice the next day to make up for forgetting, and then Ratcher Matt started working with Fleck and training him to be a useful horse on the ranch, how to stop and how to go, how to obey with just a word and a touch. And Fleck forgot all about his spots. He was so busy learning to be a good horse that he didn't worry about his spots at all. Then one day, when he was learning to wear a saddle, Miss Emily, Rancher Matt's daughter, was grooming him before she put the saddle blanket on so she could put Fleck's saddle on him, and she said, Oh, Fleck, it's almost a shame to put a saddle on you because it covers up your beautiful spots. Spots? I have spots? I had forgotten all about spots. Fleck turned his head to see his back, and sure enough, I have spots. I have white spots on my golden coat. I have spots. Fleck didn't hear anything else Miss Emily said to him that day. They rode out along one of the trails at the ranch, and Fleck had an extra spring in his step. He was an Appaloosa who had spots. When he got back from the ride, he was groomed again and put back out in his paddock with his mother and father and Dominic. He skipped and bucked and frolicked like a young colt. Mama, Papa, I have spots. Well, of course, Fleck. I told you they would come in time, and they did, said his mother, Miss Dotty. You are very wise, said Fleck, and you too, Papa. Dominic, what about my spots? I'm thinking, said Dominic and closed his eyes. The End